the new board to you. Uh, I'm president. Uh, my son is a senior. Mia is my co-president. Uh, I believe her son is a junior. Yes. And um, I'm going to read on my screen left to right uh, the executive board members, which include a few new uh, representatives for the freshman class. And uh, we'll start with Felix Lampert. Hi, uh, Felix Lumpert. Uh, I'll keep it short and sweet. I'm the sophomore uh, rep. Uh, and if anyone does have any questions, I know PSATs are coming up. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Great. Kim Jalay. Hi, everyone. Um, this is actually my sixth year at Tech. I've had three kids. My my eldest graduated. He's a sophomore in college. My middle son is a senior at Tech, and I my daughter is a freshman. I am the co-VP of the Diversity and Community Engagement Committee, and it's lovely to see you all here tonight. Thank you. Leslie Ann. Hi, I'm Leslie Ann. I'm one of your PA freshman rep. My daughter is a freshman, and I'm joining the Brooklyn Tech family this year. Thank you. Great. Ellen Goldstein. Hi, I'm Ellen. I'm the treasurer. My son is a senior, and it's lovely to see you all. Rachel. You're on mute, Rachel. Sorry about that. Hello. I have a junior at Brooklyn Tech. She's in the law major, and I'm co-VP of communication. Okay, Lisa. Uh, I'm, 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 <laughs> I am also a co-VP of the um, communications. Uh, we do tech talk. Um, I have a senior and uh, I have enjoyed our years at tech and I'm happy to help out. And we're happy that you do help us out each. We're happy that you do help us out each week. Um, Shani, Shani, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, it's Shani Bang, and I am a co junior rep this year along with my partner, Michelle Chung. And uh, happy to be here again. <laughs> Thank Michael. you. Thanks, Shani. Michael. Michael Reyes. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Michael Reyes. I have a junior and I'm the corresponding secretary. And it took me a while to figure out that our email address is, even though it uh, ends with uh, Brooklyn Tech EDU, it's a Gmail account. So I'm looking forward. I did get to access it and looking forward to, to be more active in responding to the correspondence. Lee. Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Lily. I have a uh, sophomore um, in the school. I'm the uh, sec uh, treasury assistant. Sumi. Hi, everyone. My name is Sumi Avasekara. I also go by Samantha. Um, I'm the VP of fundraising in which capacity I definitely get by with a little help from my friends or sometimes a lot of help <laughs> from my friends. Um, I have a daughter who is a sophomore and I'm so thrilled with all the exciting things that we're looking to do this year. Great, Vito. I, I'm also known as Mr. Jalay, Hamilton can relate. Um, my wife and I, Kim, we have, this is our sixth year here. I'm co-recording secretary and my Son Dylan is a senior baseball guy, and my daughter Morgan is a freshman. Susie. Hi, I'm listed as Morgan Small. Vito's going to change my name. Um, I have two uh, senior twins. I am co junior rep with Patricia Karaj, who is not here today. We are former um, fundraising uh, VPs, and we are pitching in and helping Sumi with fundraising this year. Okay, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Zhang and uh, co-recording secretary uh, working with uh, Vito and uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, I have uh, two boys in the tech, uh, older one is a senior and the uh, younger one is a uh, sophomore. 
both in the golf team. And uh, thank you, everyone. All right, terrific. Did I leave anyone out? I was kind of going left to right on my screen. Me. <laughs> oh, Sharon, of course. Yeah. What was I? And think? Tiffany. And Tiffany. Uh, so we'll go with Sharon first. Okay. Hi, my name is Sharon. Um, I am the co-VP. Um, I work with Kim. I'm the co-VP of um, Diversity and uh, Engagement Committee. And I have a daughter who is a sophomore. So it's nice to see everyone here. Great. And now Tiffany. Hi, my name is Tiffany Roberts. I'm one of the uh, new freshman parent reps. My daughter is a freshman and I'm an alumna of Tech. So it's great to be back. Terrific. Did that cover all my bases or is there anyone else who's just entered in? Hi, Hamilton. I'm here as well. Uh, Great. Chris Walker, also a freshman representative along with Tiffany. Um, nice to see everybody. Okay. Anyone else from the executive board? All right. Uh, so I believe Chris has already circulated the minutes from the October meeting, which was devoted primarily to electing our uh, freshman reps and a uh, freshman representative to the school leadership team. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and waive those minutes for approval. So if could someone give me a second? second. Great. Second. Okay, is there anything, any outstanding business before we launch into tonight's agenda? Are we good? Okay. Um, Mia, if ever you want to interrupt me or, you know, take over, let me know. Um, okay. Is Mary here? Has she joined us yet? Mary Hume? All yes, right. I just admitted her. Mary's here? I just admitted her, yeah. She's okay. here. I see her name. Uh, here I am. Here I am. Hello. Mary, Where do you want I? to touch base with the, you know, with the, our, our membership on any issues that you think we should be? Focusing on right now. I'm Mary, actually by the way, everybody's best friend. So, <laughs> um, I am. I hope everyone's pretty good. I think that we've had a we're winding up a tough marking period of of connecting with people. Um, but I feel like we're getting Jupiter is is going. We're still working on getting people connected through Jupiter, um, and uh, the parent teacher conferences are over, and people are have their creation code. So I feel like I can finally breathe and just sort of act like a normal parent coordinator and, and do what I'm supposed to do on a regular basis. So, um, so I, I don't really have that much to say, um, but thanks for, uh, for being all fantastic people. That's all. <laughs> Great, wonderful. So uh, I made a little bit of a mistake. It was actually Vito. I wanted to make sure uh, Mr. Gillet who did the, uh, October made it meeting minutes for us. So thanks, Vito. I really uh, like that. Mr. Gillet. <laughs> I miss <laughs> uh, the first person we'll hear after Mary now is uh, from Shani, who is working on a project for a teacher's wish list. And I think she'd like to say a few words. Yes. Thank you. Um, so once again this year, we are going to sponsor the teacher's wish list. And what we do is we ask teachers and staff to send us a list of items that they would like or they would need to help teach our students. And last year, the PA did this and we supplied over $24,000 worth of books, instruments, sports and science equipment, and much, much more. So Thank you to the parents for your generous donations to make things like this possible. Uh, we look forward to another great year of helping the community. And if you know someone in the school who is in need of something, please let them know about the teacher's wish list. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to say that Shani did an amazing job last year and kind of uh, at the last minute. Uh, and the fact that it was such a wonderful uh, success is not only credit to her, but a credit to to this particular program. So I would encourage uh, everybody to get involved. Yeah, uh, next, we'll hear, next we'll hear from Rachel Hall Danes. And hi all, thanks for coming. So as part of the communications team, I could really use help 
on the Brooklyn Tech High School Parents Association website. I'm looking for a Wix expert. If there's anyone in the audience or a family member, I'm not looking for much time, even 15 to 30 minutes a week or a month, you'd be surprised. It just, it takes a lot of time. I like to clean it up, update it. I'm having trouble with the mobile site. So I'm really easy to deal with. I'm very flexible in terms of time, but weekends are best. So I'll put my um, email in the chat again, Wix experts, please email me. Or even if you want to learn Wix and have more time than I do. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. And you will put your email address in the chat. So uh, any Wix experts or Wix experts wannabes, um, reach out directly to Rachel. Um, next, we're going to hear uh, a direct repeal, uh, a direct appeal report from Susie, uh, who's been working on that for us. And Mia said she would be happy to translate afterwards, if that's OK. OK, so I will speak slowly. Hello, everyone. I, I would like to thank everyone who has so generously given to our family appeal. Um, please don't let it be lost on anyone that today is Giving Tuesday and it's a great day to give. No amount is too small. No amount is too large. Um, please remember that if you work for an organization that has matching funds, to fill out the appropriate form and then the school, the PA will be matched with the forms, with the funds, if you fill out the form. Um, since our October, in the month of October, we brought in a little over $15,000 in the appeal. And in the month of November, we brought in a little over $30,000. That's not reflected yet in the, um, in the budget but that's on our appeal line. And the money that the PA makes goes to supplement things for the students, for the teachers, and really is put to great use for the community at school. So again, thank you. No amount is too small. And remember, today is Giving Tuesday. Thanks. Uh, 就感谢大家,感谢家长对PA的家长会的捐款。请大家记住今天是Giving Tuesday,就是他们有这样的一个传统,是一个周二的付出的一个日子。所以呢,希望大家尽量的给PA捐款,不管是捐多捐少,都是一份心意。当然多多益上。然后我们 上个月就十月份，我们有呃一万五的捐款，然后这十一月份有接近呃超过三万的捐款，呃，就是大家的捐款对PA还有那个学校来讲都是非常重要的，因为我们有给学校有非常多的支持，包括包括呃大家申请大
in-person Lunar New Year, I think in this will be th the first in three years. So we're going to hear from Sharon and from Kim on our fundraising for that event, which I believe February 3rd, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Friday, February 3rd. And it will be at a restaurant in Brooklyn called the Affable Eatery on 65th Street. And I believe it's Fort Hamilton Parkway. We've been there before, um, right before COVID. Um, we had a wonderful event. We had about 400 people. Right now, we've sold, I believe Sharon said, 244 tickets. Um, let's make it 254 because I'm buying a ticket tonight. We just want everyone to know we've been posting this in Tech Talk. And I know some of you are here tonight that don't read Tech Talk, you open it up, you look at the first line, scroll all the way through and get the information because we have an early bird special and it's going to end on December 15th. So take a look. We're also gonna send out a standalone email with some more details on Lunar New Year later this week. So please take a look at it. We'd love for you to have to have you there. We will sell out. So at some point, you know, you won't be able to get tickets. So please think about getting tickets in the next week or so. We'll also be sending information. We do a mega raffle, which you can purchase online in case you are unable to attend. You can still get a chance at the raffle. And we also, we need a few more volunteers to help us the evening of the event. We, we need a, a program director that night that will work with the performers to, to make sure they're on schedule. And we also, we could use some help with graphic design for our journal, um, which is one of our biggest fundraisers is the journal. So we will send that out in the standalone email so you guys can respond to us. We'll, we'll put our email in that um, later this week. And um, we also could use some performers, um, singers, dancers, uh, piano players, whatever. I, and, and Hamilton's, he's signing up. Look at that. So um, we'll, we'll put all that in, in our email later this week. Um, but we'd love to hear from you. And we certainly would love you to come and celebrate with us for our sixth annual Lunar New Year celebration. Sharon, would you like to translate? Yep, okay. Um, 大家好, um, 就是二月, 明年的二月三号, 就是我们的第六届的, um, 农历, uh, 春节晚会, uh, 到现在为止, 我们大概就是卖出了二十五桌, 就是转回原价 我们希望2月3号会看见你,而且来一起来庆祝。如果你的孩子有表演,有兴趣表演的话,也可以参见我们。谢谢大家。I'm um, done. Thank you, Sharon uh, and Kim. Uh, this is going to be a, an extraordinary event. And uh, even though it seems far off over the new year horizon, it's going to be here. The Lunar New Year here will, will be here as well soon. So um, buy those tickets now. Uh, one last uh, fundraising report before we go into the treasurer's report is from Samantha, aka Sumi. So uh, she has some special uh, requests. So I give it to her. Hi, everyone. Um, we're very excited that we're planning the spring gala auction fundraiser. Um, we've secured the Bell House, which is in Gowanus, Brooklyn. I don't know if any of you have been there. It's a fun space. 
Um, it is on Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. Um, it is, they're giving us a great deal. It is a cash bar. We are looking for um, you know, any and all ways uh, to make this a fabulous event. We are looking for donations. It can be, you know, food donations, flowers, decor, um, as well as donations for the auction, um, all kinds of things, uh, goods, services, trips, stays in country homes. Um, you know, maybe you have a business and you can offer free services uh, to someone that wants to bid on that. We will send around um, an email with more information. So please do pay attention to that and think about whether there's anything that you can donate um, in order to make the event a great success. And if you want to contribute your time and help plan the event, um, I've slowly but surely put together an amazing cadre of folks and can definitely use more help. Um, I think reaching out to people and businesses for donations for the auction is going to be um, a pretty significant lift. So if anyone would like to chip in, um, I'd love to have you. I'll put the email address in the chat and um, I look forward to um, updating you further as we have more information. Sounds good. And um, Sharon and Kim, is there a best way to be contacted directly for Lunar New Year for performers or no, I can't be the only one, so. Yes, I, I will I will put the email in and, and I'll just put you on the list, Hamilton, so you don't need to email us. I'll put it in the I'm chat. Gonna pop, I'm, I'll pop out of a cake or something. <laughs> Um, anyway, great. Uh, those were really great recaps. We'll mention them again uh, in our next Tech Talk. Uh, thanks for all those dates and thanks for all those reports. So that's a good pivot to our monthly treasurer's report Hello. from treasurer Ellen Goldstein. Hello. And, uh, I think she's already shared the treasurer's report, haven't you? Treasurer um, not, not with the big group. Um, only with the PA, so I'm attempting to do that. Now. Oh, yeah, okay. good, great. Um, let me. Ah, sorry. Okay, hopefully everyone can see the October Treasurer's report here. Um, just to let you know, this this Treasurer's report because we have not closed November because we're still in November. So this is just through the end of October before we started our family appeal and uh, raising uh, selling tickets for Lunar New Year. But I'll give you a little preview on that. So so far this year, we raised um, about eighteen thousand dollars in donations. So thank you very much. A little over a thousand dollars in matching grants. Thank you guys for that. Um, some of the things your PA has paid for, um, we have been, we reserved the restaurant for Lunar New Year. We paid for the school date books for the freshmen. Um, we paid for a National Honor Society open house, uh, 10th grade orientation. And we have been underwriting all the dinners and breakfasts um, with Mr. Newman so far. I just wanted to give you a little preview um, of what's been happening in November. Um, you have all been incredibly generous, um, and we have brought in about $38,000 in donations. The Lunar New Year event has sold uh, about a little over $19,000 worth of tickets at this point, $19,400, um, which is fantastic. We also paid for uh, the school merchandise, which you will see sold at various events, sweatshirts, t-shirts, um, whatever. Um, so we pay for that and um, we don't make all of that money back in sales, but it's something that we think is really great for school spirits. So we're happy to pay for it. Um, that's basically the update. I will have more detail in, uh, at our December meeting. A um, couple things I just wanted to ask folks. Um, one of the things, oh, first I wanted to just give a huge shout out and thank you to Lily, the assistant treasurer who is invaluable and handles all of the online donations. And we also had a parent step up, Kaho Wong, um, who has been helping us with our banking and our reconciliation and, um, keeping our books in order. And they've both been incredibly helpful. So yay, shout out to those, um, 
A couple things I just wanted to share. Um, we are incredibly grateful for matching grants. Um, if your company provides matching grants, they are sometimes incredibly hard to track down who gave us the matching grant. Um, if you ask your company for a matching grant, if you could shoot an email to patreasurer at bths.edu and let us know, um, that would really help us with our bookkeeping. So I just wanted to make that request. And if you send us a donation via check, um, if you could include your email with the check, either in the memo line or just uh, with the form that comes with that, that also makes it much, much easier for us to send you a re uh, receipt and track those donations. Um, so that's a small request on behalf of your, of your treasurer team here. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions um, if anybody has any. Helen, could you... Um put that email address in the chat? Yeah, no problem. Should I stop sharing here? I can do that. One thing I wanna mention about the, the merchandise the, that we just uh, paid out for and which Patricia and Susie were so great at kind of running to ground for us. Um, we will be doing a big push to sell uh, Brooklyn Tech merchandise uh, after uh, the letters go out uh, about the incoming freshman class. That's usually when we get a, a nice bang for our buck. So that would be sometime in, I think, March or April. But we will continue to, to try to sell as much as possible. All right. I wanted to go back to Mary for just a second. But before we do that, did, is there anything from anybody? Any items I've missed or Mia? Are we good? Um, I think Principal Newman was supposed to join us around 6.45 mm. or uh, a few minutes early. So uh, I don't know if there's any sort of general topic that we can talk about as we wait for his arrival. I'm, I'm here, Hamilton. Oh, you are? Great. Oh. I'm good. Yeah, 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 I'm just sitting <laughs> in the back. Hi, David. Hi, um, how are you? I'm well. Welcome. Um, good to see you. Nice to see you as well. Uh, so we would like to devote a good chunk of this particular uh, remote uh, PA meeting to you, let you oh. sort of field questions from parents. Uh, it's not something we've been able to do so uh, oddly enough uh, in our uh, in-person meetings. Yeah. But uh, I wanted to sort of start out that conversation. I'm going to be monitoring the chat. Uh, me and any others can can jump in as well. Uh, to ask those questions, but I thought maybe uh, you could just talk our community through some of the budget issues, which we've all read about in the news, uh, how those affect Brooklyn Tech, uh, what we should anticipate, or how we should think about uh, about these cuts going forward. Yeah, um, uh, well, to be uh, transparent about a few things. One, if it does go through um, or the budget gets cut, and I think we're talking about the what's called the extra bump for uh, students and budgets of students in a specialized high school. That's what we're talking about, Hamilton? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, even though uh, the percentage is a real percentage, um, I'm not really sure, oddly enough, how much money we're actually talking about. Um, it could be anywhere between uh, four and even potentially uh, six and a half million dollars um, per year. And so um, so anyway, uh, that sounds like a lot of money. Um, that is a lot of money. And just so you know, uh, fair student funding, we get about 38 million dollars out of fair student funding. Um, we have some other funding sources that gets us around another $4 million. That's through CTE funding, other sort of uh, auxiliary funding, um, you know, mostly through the state um, and some through the city. But um, 38 is our fair student funding budget. Um, and to take a hit of four to six or so million dollars. Uh, that would be a lot. I mean, per, to be honest with you, it would be 
you know, in a in a smaller sort of budget crunch, I'd say, oh, you know, I'll really earn my paycheck and I'll really, you know, stretch a dollar and I'll make it all work. Um, those kind of numbers are well beyond that conversation. And so uh, I obviously I would do if that comes to fruition, I would do the best of my ability to try to preserve everything we have. Um, just just to let you know a little bit of uh, s somewhere around 88 percent of our entire budget is salaries, salaries from everything from me uh, to every single teacher, every single administrator, every single person who works in the building. Um, so uh, if that's 88 percent of our current budget and you, you hit me even four million dollars, we can't afford everybody's salary, let alone buying pens and paper and, you know, all sorts of other things that we need to run the school, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, look, I, I don't know how realistic it is. I don't know uh, how much of a reality it's going to become, but it is, uh, it surely is troubling. Um, and, uh, and as it gets maybe closer to a potential reality, I'll start making plans to see and be pretty transparent about uh, what what the budget's going to look like and how we're going to do, you know, to accommodate that. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what more to say um, about that, um, but I, I have read the report and the recommendations. Um, I've also read there's a minority report of uh, dissenting members of that committee. Um, it was a pr quite large committee. Um, I think somewhere around uh, 35 members or so um, that made ultimately the recommendation. Um, but there were some members of the committee that made, made a counter recommendation, um, not just affecting us, obviously the other specialized high schools. And then it turns out that there are some schools that are not specialized high schools that also get um, the extra funding as well. Uh, Townsend Harris, uh, Millennium, uh, Bard, and some other schools. So. Um, yeah, so I don't really know what more to say on it. Uh, to be also perfectly honest, no, no one from the uh, DOE has had a conversation with me about it, um, and nor my superintendent. And so uh, I don't know. I don't know what what uh, the future has in store for it. Um, I see some uh, follow up questions. Um, what uh, what can parents do to help? Um, I don't know. I think I think voicing your opinions about about uh, these potential cuts and how they could affect our school community and your, you know, your kids. Um, I think that would be uh, acceptable. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just, so I, I don't just to, add, just, just to add on to that, David, there are some uh, there's been a lot of lively conversation, robust uh, conversations in the in the parents Facebook groups and and other uh, social media platforms that are not officially associated with either the school or the Brooklyn Tech PA. Uh, what we've been talking about uh, in our uh, specialized high schools monthly president's meeting is uh, what position the PA should take. And uh, right now, it's an ongoing conversation, but right now the, the feeling is that um, parents, as parents, should voice their own, you know, perspectives on this. So we're not going to try to, you know, throw a lot of, of uh, things into the fire, a lot of irons in the fire, but that is something just to echo what David has just said, um, to express yourself, to express your point of view uh, as we go forward. One other thing I wanted to see if you could talk about, uh, Principal Newman, is, is the mandated smaller class sizes, because that will also yeah. impact uh, yeah. going forward. Um, I, I do, there's a couple of questions in the chat though that are related to these budget cuts. Do you you want me to uh, the potential? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, can, can ask uh, the specialized high schools in general get less funding compared to overall high schools in New York City to begin with? So that's interesting. Like so, everybody is given a formula now that's basically at 100% of fair student funding. So if we get an extra bump above 100%, that sounds like, wow, you know, specialized high schools are getting so much more money than all the other high schools. Um, very few schools are actually at 100%, and uh, many schools are well over 100%. Um, and I, I think I read somewhere in, in, the, uh, in a report 
uh, that minority report that the average school gets somewhere between 130 and 140%, which is including this bump, we don't get anything near that. So um, in, my, in, my, in my sort of, you know, in my opinion, um, if there is a narrative that the specialized high schools get more per student than other schools, I think that's a false narrative. Um, but yeah, and so, uh, and I'm not saying that the DOE, the mayor or the city is saying that, that cause they're not. And so, um, but I, I know that's being played up a little bit in the media. It, it's just not true. Um, so, uh, Max says, do I, did I understand the cards correctly? So basically all, yeah, we've, we've already talked about it. Yeah. Basically all the high school performing high schools are getting major budget cuts. So you've just sort of laid that out. Yeah. Um, and Valeria's question is the budget cuts for all specialized high schools. They, the working group recommended these cuts. It's not just the eight specialized high schools, but five additional high schools for a total of 13, kind of what we're now calling the portfolio schools. Mm. Um, just going back, uh, oh, is there a chance to kind of address the issue of, of the class size and how that's going to Oh, okay. So, so you've also heard about uh, that uh, bill that was passed into law, signed by uh, the governor, of a, a mandated class size down uh, to twenty-five uh, students for high schools um, in most classes, phys ed classes from fifty down to forty, um, but other most other classes from thirty-four down to twenty-five. Now that sounds great. 25 kids in a classroom sounds wonderful. As an educator, that sounds amazing. Um, you know, more manageable, more personal attention, less papers to grade. It all sounds great, right? Um, but uh, it creates problems, right? So if you have 30, you know, instead of 34, in most of our classes, I would say our average class is probably around 32 students. Um, and so you go down to, let's say, 32 to 25, you have to add all those, you know, more sections of classes and then hire a whole boatload of more teachers, um, which is all well and good um, if, it, if we get additional funding to be able to uh, pay those teachers. That, that's fine. Um, but then real concerns are honestly about space. Um, we're pretty jammed up not just because we have 6,000 kids, but, you know, we have 6,000 kids, 175 classrooms. And, you know, it, it just, uh, we're not creating, even if they give us more money, uh, we're surely not creating any more space. I mean, there's talk of some innovative sort of things. Maybe we ask LIU if we go, can go use some of their space or some other places. Um, that, that has logistical issues that sound easy. They're down the street. But there's it's mired in problems everywhere from insurance to, you know, LIU is probably going to expect me to us to give them money, <laughs> and so, um, you know, but there are all sorts of problems uh, aligned with that. Um, so uh, I, I don't, you know, once again, if that's put into practice, um, if it, now I will say this that there is a five year phase in. So you have to have 20% of your classes year one, that being 23, 24 in the fall. You have to have 20% of your class at 25 kids in a class. Um, and then uh, and then the following year, 40%, the following year, 60%, till you get to 100 over a five-year period. Um, there seems to be based on space considerations, some sort of uh, out where you could, you still have to have a plan down the road about how you can make this happen, but you could uh, delay it uh, a bit. And so- what the, we haven't seen this policy written out and what the criteria is or the application process to delay it. So there hasn't been any rubber meets the road as far as this policy goes. Um, yeah, I, I mean, year one wouldn't be so devastating, um, but, uh, you know, getting uh, P classes, for example, down to 40, and that might uh, get me close to my 20%, you know, and I'll, I'll throw in a, another few classes um, shop classes, cl classes that have heavy machinery um, that for safety concerns are already limited to 28. So taking those down to 25 wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be so difficult. So year one between PE and some of the shop classes, I could probably make it work 
without too much of an issue. I might have to hire some extra PE teachers, but um, that should be okay. But after year one, I think we're we're running into some trouble. <laughs> so uh, so uh, yeah. So that's the, that's you know I, I just I really want to see. And once again, this sounds like a great idea, right? And so. I just fearful based on space and funding if we could actually do it. And, and you know, I, I'd probably be leaning towards getting some type of waiver or delay if uh, if that's uh, how feasible that is and how possible it is. Okay, thanks so much for that uh, very thorough and, and uh, very helpful uh, cap uh, recap of, the, of where we are. Uh, I'm just gonna go start going down and um, asking questions that are popping up into the chat. If you see something, David, that you really want to address, feel free to interrupt me. Uh, mm -hmm. Anna Selinger asks, who do we email to help with the gala? If uh, Sumi could just put her email address again in the chat, that would be helpful. Um, Amy Mack asks, will the PA be doing bake sale for the December performance? Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if any of the other board members know the answer to that question, but feel free to respond to Amy in the chat. Uh, what I would say is uh, we don't, the PA doesn't normally do something, but many times you will have a sports team. Uh, uh, many times the football team, uh, they are really very good at fundraising. They'll come in and do something. They'll either have either bake sale or they'll have hot dogs, something. Um, so it could be that a sports team doing it, but currently the PA is not doing a big sale. Okay, thanks so much, Kim. Um, Denise Galang asks, can I get info on the National Honor Society and how her daughter can join? Uh, is that something for you, Mr. Principal Newman or Mary? Um... Uh, probably not, but I don't know anybody else who can answer better than me. Um, there is, we'll send out information and there is criteria that they must meet to qualify. And then there is a, a big, you know, pinning in ceremony and whatnot. Um, I will, the person, uh, to reach out to is, uh, is our lead COSA, Miss Massey. Um, and she'll get you all the information. Um, but normally something is, you know, it, it's sent out. And then if you're interested in joining and the criteria um, for consideration. Uh, Jen Wilson asks, does a student have to take Spanish three, French three, et cetera? Um, uh, mixed bag question, right? So technically, no, uh, not according to state diploma standards, but most uh, competitive uh, colleges want to see that course there, a level three of any language. Um, so you, by not continuing, uh, you'd be hurting yourself in the long run and maybe taking yourself out of consideration as a, a potential student for some of the top colleges in the United States. Uh, Erica Teasley Linick asks questions, Ray, athletics. We had heard that students on varsity sports teams could wave out of PE. Our son is on two teams, winter basketball and spring tennis, and still has PE. Is that true or an urban legend of sorts? Also, why are kids made to return their uniforms at the end of the season? We thought our fees went toward paying for them. He had to turn in his stained tennis shirt. <laughs> thought that was weird. We would gladly play, pay for uniforms at our fundraiser for athletic needs. So that's a bunch uh, of wrapped up into one. Uh, there's a lot in there. Uh, not really urban legend. The, the two uh, uh, PE thing, uh, the two uh, season PSAL sport getting out of PE uh, is, is a real thing. Um, the PE department usually wants to see that it causes you some hardship by having it in your schedule, that you want to take another class. So you wanted to take like, let's say, uh, an AP bio or uh, like an AP um, science that's double period or a BC calculus or something where it jams up your schedule. Um, obviously, the PE teachers, you know, think that even our student athletes should be getting as much 
PE as possible. And so, uh, so yeah, but that's really where it's at. You sort of have to come with some notion of how it jams up your schedule a bit. Um, and so uh, that that's sort of where we're at. I mean, we're we're constantly reviewing um, that policy, and also uh, it's only uh, you're only supposed to come out of PE if this actually happens when you are in season. So for your kid who's in winter and spring would have PE in the fall, and then potentially lose PE in the middle of the fall when winter begins. And it it, it kind of makes things a little haphazard, especially when grades are being considered. Um, the last part, though, uh, about, yeah, handing in a tennis shirt, that does sound potentially weird. I mean, I understand, obviously, a, a football helmet, you know, pads or, or something like that. But a shirt that somebody wears all the time seems a bit a bit <laughs> over the top for me. Um, that, that surely will be something I, I'll look into. I mean, I... I I don't know if I was on the tennis team, if I want to be wearing a shirt that I knew 20 kids wore before me over the last decade or so. So, uh, yeah, I, I will look into that and see uh, and see where we are on that. OK, thanks. This question from our freshman rep, Leslie Ann. Parents are concerned that homework is being sent into the late evening and not at the time of class. Any information on that? Should the parent reach out directly to the teacher? Yeah, I mean, what, what I'm, yes, there we have a very clear policy that uh, that students must know what their homework is for the following day by the time they leave class. And also, it can be due, at the soonest it can be due, is the next day during class. It cannot be, now, I will say that it seems like for many assignments that it is due at midnight. That is not actually the, the, the case. And I've asked teachers to clarify this with students. When you make a, an assignment in Google Classroom, it automatically makes that assignment due at 11.59 that evening. So I told them, and it, it is actually a pain to go in every assignment, you have to go in and change that to another time. And so I told teachers they could either change each assignment to make it reflective of the time that their class meets the following day, or they could send a message to the students and let them know, you're gonna see 1159, but every single time I give an assignment, just know that of course, by school policy, it's due the next day in class. So if you're seeing 1159, that's that's not real. So, but that that doesn't seem to be this question. There, It seemed like they're being sent assignments late in the evening. That, that, that is, if that is true, if students are being told, check Google Classroom, because at nine o'clock, I'm going to post a homework that's due tomorrow. That absolutely violates our policy. Um, this policy is very, very clear. Um, you should speak to a, a teacher. And if, if you don't get a remedy there very quickly, um, you should speak to the assistant principal who will remedy that very quickly for you. Thank you. I'm really the information. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie. Ann. Um, Felix, our sophomore rep, asks, can we confirm the date of the PSAT for sophomores? Oh, um, I, sh I might. I do know that. I just don't have that at my fingertips. It is in March. Um, I, feel I think like it's I think it's March 23rd, but that's just the number that comes to me. Do you want to look at oh, you have I got that it. here? It's the 22nd. 22nd. What day of the week mm -hmm. is that? Mm -hmm. Is that a Tuesday? <laughs> Let me look. I'm going to go all the way to next year. Yeah, here you are. Time it's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. All right. Um, yeah, well, it usually is on a Tuesday, but I have, I do have the 20. Oh, wait. It's in the, it should be in the school calendar. Oh, yeah. Is it? Oh. It's in the Brooklyn Tech's uh, calendar. Oh. Anyone has access to that? I'm going to open that up as we're speaking. Um, yeah, I do have that date, though, but I will verify that, especially if it is in the calendar already. Um, the calendar says, the calendar says, um, the 23rd on a Thursday. Didn't I say the, oh, I said the 22nd? Well, I said the 23rd. Oh, so you're right. Okay, got it. Um, but I have an email when I searched, 
All right. We'll go with it. It is what it is, but um you told me that, so you know. Yeah, <laughs> but I have an email, an internal email that says the 22nd. Hmm. Um all right. You know what? We'll figure out the date and we'll send it yeah, to Yeah, we'll call. figure it out. The count okay, it's either the 22nd or 23rd of March. And we'll figure out the other one too for you guys All at right. SAT. All right. Thanks. Um, Thanks, Felix, for exposing. I don't know what's going on. In <laughs> There's not a, a second SAT, right? What do you mean second? Who takes who takes SAT again this year? Anyone? The juniors take it. Juniors, sure. Yeah. Is yeah, that in right. March also? And, and the sophomores take the PSAT on the same day. Okay. Either the twenty second or the twenty third. The juniors. Yeah. Will, <laughs> yeah. Will Either one. Prepare for both. All right. Um, Sumi put her, her email address in the chat for those who would like to join her team for the gala fundraising. Um, Valeria Rodriguez asks, are there any club sports or other sports activities besides the varsity teams? So not too many. And I'll, I'll tell you some reasons why. Of course, there is massive interest in it, but um, even if it's a club sport, we still need to have a coach, needs to be somebody who's trained in CPR, how to use a defibrillator, all that stuff, right? Um, but I will tell you that coaches, as you know, we have 40-something teams, and uh, we're stretched pretty thin on coaches. And so um, I, I don't really have anybody who has all that training as a coach who's willing to do it as a club, um, and who's not currently occupied coaching, I'm surely not going to let somebody from another school, um, although we have educators from other schools that are coaches for us, PSAL coaches, I'm not going to entertain that at, as a club. Um, but uh, we do have rugby as a club. We have an ultimate Frisbee club. Um, that's pretty much it. But we don't have clubs that mirror our own teams. Like we don't have a basketball club, you know, or a baseball club. Um, it's pretty much limited to those two um, sports that I mentioned, just based on availability of uh, coaches. Anton asks, what's up with the scaffolding in front of the school? <laughs> there before my daughter admitted, was admitted to Parkland Tech, and now my daughter daughter is already in her junior year, yet the scaffolding is still there. Yeah, um, the scaffolding has been there. I don't know. It might be. Uh, I'm trying to remember when it first appeared. It's been at least 15 years. And so um, so the at first, for a long time, more than a decade, the scaffolding was up there, but no work was taking place. And and that that is uh, that is quite common um, scaffolding being up. Uh, for not for no reason, but literally to protect people walking outside the school um, when you have pointing issues, pointing, you know, uh, brick pointing that needs to be done, right? And so there is then uh, fear that bricks may be compromised mm -hmm. and could potentially fall off a building. And so scaffolding protects you just in case that happens. Um, so that was at first, um, but there is now a uh, project that has very little to do with pointing work, but will end up with a lot of pointing work um, where they're rebuilding the parapet of the building, the top three and a half feet of the entire building all the way around. Um, we are about uh, three years uh, or so into a two and a half year project. Um, and and uh, I, I, if I had to guess any estimations, you're probably two and a half years away from that. And, and that is a significant amount of the scaffolding. That's a scaffolding that goes all the way to the top of the building. Previous to that, we only had one floor of scaffolding to protect our heads, right? And so, uh, so uh, you know, then there's pointing to be done around the building as well. Um, it's a massive project. Um, everything you find, you pull some bricks away at the parapet and everything you find, uh, you have to repair. And then that's subcontracting more jobs out and bidding and whatnot. The bottom line is that a 90 year old building and the top of the building takes the brunt of all the weather and it's uh, decaying and it needs to be redone. And so that's what is happening. I will say that 
there is a lot of work taking place. It takes place after uh, your children leave the building. It starts at four. It goes to about 10 o'clock at night every single day, including weekends. Um, the uh, Every single day after the students leave, you know, there there's 30, 40 workers all over the scaffolding doing work every single day. And so uh, we're making ample progress. Um, and also we use some of that space on the roof as outdoor uh, physical education space. Um, so it might be nice to recover that as well that we obviously can't use now while the work is being done. Uh, so probably not seeing the scaffolding disappear in your Brooklyn Tech uh, well, your kids are going to the school, but, uh, yeah, after it's done, I'll be sure to send everybody pictures, but, uh, I, I, there's very few of us that still remember how beautiful the school is, um, with all that, but yeah, I wish I could say more, but it just seems like there's a lot of delays, but a lot of work is, is taking place. There is real progress taking place. I don't want you to get this concept that it's just a, uh, a project that's going on forever and not making progress because it's making uh, a lot of progress. Jamie Obletz asks, my son had very little homework last year as a freshman. This year, the amount of homework is staggering even over the weekends. Can you explain why there is such a drastic change? Yeah, um, that's that that's surely not by design. It's It's not like the school ramps up as you get older with the amount of homework you have. Um, some there's a lot of uh, teacher autonomy when it comes to homework. Um, and so maybe you got just got a little bit of a, ruck, a lucky run in, in freshman year where uh, you had teachers that didn't give a lot of homework. Now, when I say a lot of autonomy, autonomy, yes, but still has to adhere to our homework policy that has a definite amount of homework that, that you can get per class. Um, but there are you know, there are some teachers that range from you know, giving the half an hour of homework per class a night to some teachers that don't give homework ever. And so, uh, it, you know, the the ones that give 30 minutes of homework a night, they could do that. That adheres to the policy, um, not more, but it adheres to the policy. Um, and the ones who give no homework, I'm okay with that as well. And so, uh, so yeah, it's a little bit of, I don't know, the, the I don't want to say it's like completely random and by luck, but it's, I guess it's a little bit of that. Thanks. Pamela Ryan asks, and this may be a question for Shani, actually, are there any upcoming events for juniors, dances, et cetera? Um, I saw that and I, we do not have anything planned for the future for juniors uh, as far as upcoming dances. And uh, maybe this is something that I could ask Mr. Newman is, you know, is it typically something that juniors have done? You know, other grades have dances. I started yeah. off, you know, my freshman year during COVID. So, you know, there was absolutely nothing going on in the building. But also, how do you accommodate 1,500 kids at a school dance, right? Okay. Even just for one grade. Yeah, um, we, we don't have a junior prom. Uh, we don't have like a junior masquerade ball. A lot of those things are senior year. It doesn't mean that they they can't, that juniors sure have plenty of activities. Uh, I just don't think that there has been a junior dance. It doesn't mean that juniors can't propose it and, and work it its way up through committee. Um, I would have no problem doing that. I mean, we just had a senior dance on a boat. And so if we could have a senior dance on a boat, I think we could pull anything off. Right. And so, um, yeah. yeah. And so it, it's just a matter of when things go through the committee and the coaches, uh, you know, put it together and whatnot. Um, but yeah, everything's like on the table at all times. We haven't historically had junior dances, but, you know, I surely wouldn't say no. OK, good to know. Thank you. All right. Here is another junior question from two questions, actually, from Jillian Cavanaugh. She says, when will juniors start getting information advising on college stuff? And then her second question related, also, will there be an in-school SAT in the spring for juniors? I think we figured out that's either March 22nd or March 23rd. Right. Uh, that date, uh, a fixed date will be coming in Tech Talk shortly. But uh, Mr. Newman, would you like to just address some of these early college concerns for junior families, even sophomore yeah. families. Yeah, in the spring, uh, there is uh, the junior college information night. 
and that sort of kicks off the college events for junior families. Did that, was there already one of those? Somebody, uh, no? And so, but that usually happens early spring. Um, sometimes there's an information uh, session for uh, students only, but that'll kick off in the spring. And that sort of launches you into events and sort of puts the whole college process in uh, your orbit. So that's, uh, you should be see seeing information about that coming soon. Uh, Christy asks uh, a, a question that's actually again, sort of several questions here. She says, I have concern about students who need spaces or places to study or doing their homework during their lunch period or free period. So far, my son, who is a sophomore, told me he is doing homework in hall at in hallways as everywhere is so crowded he can't find a seat in the library are there any empty classrooms that students can use during their free periods or after school and how about the student center mentioned last year all right uh that's a whole lot of stuff but uh so um the library does fill up um the uh, the, there's, you know, obviously you don't want to go to the lunchroom because it's a little, you know, noisy and if they, that you want to do work, the hallway is usually, um, is usually the go-to that people, uh, that students utilize. I don't really have a problem with that. Um, the, uh, and students don't seem to have a problem either in the hallway. Uh, usually they're spread out. It's surely not crowded. As you may know, while classes are going on, you can hear a pin drop in our hallways. And so it's not that bad of a situation being in the hallways. Um, I can't put students in empty classrooms if there were any on any particular period. They can't find a classroom and just go in um, in a classroom setting. Students need to be supervised and I don't have adults to supervise them. Um, and so uh, the student center, uh, we are looking to launch that before um, the uh, holiday break, um, but it is going to be a soft launch and maybe stay as a year as a senior only space. Um, we just, uh, the space is not, you know, uh, it, it's pretty big. I think it could, it could easily hold uh, 50 kids, um, but that's not a lot. And so seniors might occupy the whole space. We'll see how that goes. And then we were going to have computers on the outside uh, for students to do work. Um, so that could be another space. But we're only really talking about uh, 10 to 15 computers. So we're not talking about armies of you know space and whatnot. Hallways aren't bad. If they need a computer, that's a different story. But hallways are pretty, uh, although they don't have a seat to sit in and they'll, they end up sitting on the floor, leaning against the wall. Um, I could surely work on that. I've surely had ideas about some type of furniture in the hallway. Um, and uh, and yeah, but besides that, it's pretty it's pretty good as far as quiet space and whatnot. But uh, space is a premium in our building and we just don't have a lot of spaces, unfortunately, for kids to just exist, do work. There's also in the lobby on the first floor, there is some seating there and students are allowed to stay in the lobby as well. No one's chasing them out of any of these spaces, um, but I don't have, you know, a big grand room like a, uh, like the old foundry hint hints, you know, to, uh, to have students just, you know, sit and do work, but that's surely, uh, you know, a, a, a dream, uh, or I'd like to say more realistic than a dream, but something we're surely pushing for. Uh, again, a couple of Dr. questions. Newman, I have a following up question. Like the auditorium has been closed, right? Yeah, we, we we just opened it back up. Okay. And so uh, that has been closed based on um, based on just human beings. Uh, I, I hired a couple of school aides and so I was able to open it back up. Um, so now I have adults to monitor. Whenever you're in closed space like that, you ha you have to have adult supervision. Uh, the hallways, you have adult supervision, but, you know, not not like you do in the closed spaces. Um, so, yeah, the auditorium is open back up again. So students can go to the auditorium um, as well. Thank you. There are a couple of questions again about SAT and PSAT dates. We have determined that it's either March 22nd or March 23rd. Uh, more to come on that front. 
Uh, Devi Gupta asks, many select colleges look for a high school student to have four years of science, but because of tech majors taking up schedule time, many junior year sciences being double periods and eighth graders regents counting towards science credit are Brooklyn Tech students at a disadvantage if they don't take, I guess, four years of high science school science. Um, I colleges, mean, colleges consider eighth grade regents toward those expectations and give credence to the tech majors. Yeah, I mean, there should be ways to fit in. I realize that, um, you know, first of all, we do have some single period uh, sciences that you could pop into. Not all of them are double period, but um, I don't think that puts us at a disadvantage. I mean, there are ways to fit these classes in your schedule. You might have a one to 10, you might, you know, that you might not want. You might, you know, not have lunch every day, which is, you know, not not preferable, but teachers will you know, most likely let you eat in class um, if you need to do so. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't think that, that there's really a problem getting uh, getting four years of science. And I think we're, we're, we're really being able to accommodate students who want to do that. Um, it's not, it's not, and as far as colleges, it's not an end all be all. You know, most high end colleges are not are looking at a schedule as is, and they're not mandating that sort of stuff. I mean, if you're taking, for example, an AP calculus class and you're not taking a science, they're good with that, you know? And so it matters what, what you're mixing in a little bit. It's not like a, a knockout a sort of thing, like not taking three years of a world language. You know, there are other classes that they will, and many of the major classes, they'll, they'll see some sort of uh, STEM focus um, you take an engineering class in lieu of a science class, they're going to be okay with that. Eric Mean asks, and I, the freshmen are, are freshmen supposed to join some clubs? Now, I have heard your club spiel many times, and now you, I guess Eric and others get to hear it as well. <laughs> yes, there is, it is probably, uh, it is mandated. We are forcing you to make some friends to connect more to the school. Um, it is the best way that we have found to make this, uh, you know, we have advisory classes, you have colleagues in your, your class as well, um, but it's a really good way to make social and other types of connections um, uh, in the building. And that is very important. To be a, a solo flyer, Brooklyn Tech, ninth grade, doesn't work out so well. Um, so hopefully that uh, you we utilize clubs to make those connections. So. Um, yeah, so you do have to join a club. We are actually um, having another club fair. I know that we we had a shaky start for the first club fair, and now we're having club fairs broken out over four or five days, a second club fair, um, so that we can handle uh, traffic flow. But uh, yeah, so um, yes, you do have to join a club. That's the bottom line. Devi Gupta also asks, how does class lateness, if two classes are far apart, affect a student? Um, hmm. uh, I would say that, that teachers are not so sensitive to the notion of you coming in late all the time with an excuse that you got to travel really far. Um, you can, it sounds crazy, but you can make it. Um, most of students who are late either go to the bathroom, which is fine, right? But that doesn't happen every single day, or they take the elevator. Um, so I would say uh, if they're if they're finding that the elevator is making them late, I would say walk. By the way, I just confirmed that the SAT and PSAT is on the twenty third. Okay. Hear that, everyone? March 23rd yeah. is yeah, the yeah. date. Yeah. Um, Pascal, hold on one sec. Yeah, Pascal Buzi asks, how do I get information on SAT prep and does tech offer anything? I, I you, you still do that discounted thing through the PA or no? I believe so, yes. Yeah, we don't offer that. Now you could get tutoring in English, you can get tutoring in math, which would truly help you um, towards the SAT or the PSAT, but we don't offer SAT, PSAT, math, 
um, or ELA, but there are, you know, packaged programs that you get a discount that we help facilitate through your parent organization. Gil Ronan asks, but I heard something about the bo boilers being re removed outside this February. Is that true? <laughs> um, the So the boilers, uh, we're, we're running off of a temporary boiler on the street. Um, we used to have four boilers. Then we were down to two boilers. Um, then we were down to one boiler. And then we put the boiler on the street um, as a backup. And then the one boiler was making everybody nervous. So then we switched completely to the uh, the two boilers on the street um, as temp boilers that have now been temp boilers for over a year. Um, the old boilers, all four of them have actually been removed from the school. That was a massive undertaking. Um, and they literally, you go down there and I can't even explain to you how big these boilers were. So the four boilers basically took up almost <laughs> like the footprint of the entire school in the basement in some ways. Um, anyway, they've all been diced up and removed. And so it's barren now. There is a plan of what they're going to put in place there. Um, I know some of you have been hearing about, you know, electric heat and that all the future is going to be electric heat in schools. Um, but this project started before that. I, I believe that they are going to move us over to gas heat um, as we're currently oil. Um, so uh, no way though in February. I mean, there's the the basement is empty. I mean, they they're so uh, I have heard no no plan in the distant you know future or the well the near future uh, rather uh, to bring new boilers in and start making that uh, happen. And so uh, so uh, yeah, February. I don't know where you got February from, but there's. I have not seen anything about boilers arriving in February. Okay, Denise Gelling asks, what are requirements for club and volunteer hours to graduate? I can't oh. find this info on the website, but I'm pretty sure it is on the website, right? I think it is. And you're, you're, you guys are really asking all these questions. I don't know the answers to <laughs> but I, uh, I shared the link. I sent oh, them the link okay. directly. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I see, I see here, Tiffany. Thank you. Um, Leslie Ann says, can the auditorium be utilized at all? You have said yes. Uh, Felix says kids do get told they can't be in the hallway. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that at the beginning of the year, there was a, a push towards getting kids out of the hallway and, um, and the, We've sort of subsided on that and uh, we're allowing kids who are being respectful, being quiet. In the beginning of the year, there was a little bit too much noise on occasion um, and deans were asking students to go into the cafeteria. Um, but anyway, uh, that is uh, that is not happening anymore. So we have had, and those weren't even incidents. We're talking about two kids clustering near each other, talking, and it was disturbing a teacher sort of thing. Not, you know, not disrespectful, just to a point that, you know, a teacher might have to go in the hall and say, hey, can you guys like be quiet and whatever. And so now you do see kids not hanging out with anybody. They're alone. They're in different spots in the hallway. And they're realizing that, you know, it, it's not for a place to sit and talk. Um, we haven't had any problems. So kids aren't being moved along anymore. Matt Dockery asks, is there a WhatsApp chat for freshman parents? And I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. I but... shared that as well. Oh, oh thank yeah. you, Tiffany. Yes. You're I welcome. haven't caught up to you yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's not official. It's not an it's official, not official. App. It's not official. Facebook right, and WhatsApp right. are not official. All right. Sally Kai asks or set or comments, Stuyvesant students volunteer to offer SH, SHSAT to middle school kids called Sty Prep. Does Brooklyn Tech have such a program available when stu where students volunteer to teach SHSAT prep for free to middle school students? I, we have an organization um, that is called Aspire and they've been reaching out to middle schools to try, but they're not really prep they're more about information to give students information on the differences between the schools and you know counsel them on 
uh, yeah, so it's not really been, it hasn't been tutoring per se. Um, we, I'm trying to think, we, we have had through various different outlets to especially local um, Brooklyn middle schools that have historically not sent students to our school. Um, we've had students reach out and do, uh, do tutorings. Those were mostly one-offs that were not like every week we're going to meet here sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, I haven't had any students that were have really tried to organize uh, such an effort. I imagine at Stuyvesant, this was a student initiated thing where uh, they had students who have a lot of uh, interest in it. I have no problem students doing it, um, but no one's really come forward to propose this as a, a, a new club or organization. Valeria Rodriguez asks, during PE class, my son didn't hear his name being called for attendance check. Mm -hmm. So right after all names were called, he mentioned it to the teacher. The teacher didn't accept it and still gave him absence for the class, even though he was fully present and intended the entire class and was with complete uniform. I didn't find, I don't find this reasonable. What should I do? Yeah, just reach out. If the teacher is, yeah, it sounds like not budging, just reach out to assistant principal Lovelet um and wow. she and she will uh interject on this situation uh her email is um i'll just write in the chat i guess um it is just k love let at school all right you should have that in the chat okay shuilin chu uh, asks, my sophomore child is failing AP history. Is there any way to make up over the summer? I understand this class is requirement for graduation. So, so which AP history? It might be uh, probably, U.S. history or world. Yeah, I guess it, it doesn't really matter for the question, but both can be made up, not on the AP level. So you'd make up the, the course that it surplants um, regular U.S. history or regular uh, global history. But yes, you can make it up over the summer. Um, but uh, I mean, if you're talking about a course right now, um, there is plenty of time to catch up and to make up and to get on the right track this year. I, you should not in the end of November being, you know, giving up on this course for the entire year. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's surely try to make a go of it. But if it ends up being a failure, Yes, it can be uh, made up in uh, summer school. Okay, Jacqueline Frost asks, my son would like to start a music appreciation club, but cannot find a teacher willing to be an advisor. Any suggestions? Oh. Um, my own senior just went through something similar recently, so. Yeah, um, try to, you know, I, I get, I would talk to Miss Massey. Um, I think we put her uh, email address earlier on in the chat um, so she could put some feelers out, so especially some newer teachers who might not have a club um, yet. Uh, I see somebody also, by the way, put in the chat about a uh, about the club fair. I think it's, was it, is it going on right now? Apparently it's going on right now as we speak. Um, so I'm just going off camera. I have to plug in my, laptop before it, it uh it, tiffany Graveri kindly put a link to the current club's directory in the chat great um which uh, as a response to amy mack's question about whether or not the, it, the club directory was up to date uh she said she remembers there was a separate list shared by email last year is it going to be a separate list again and tiffany responded with a link to the current directory. Um, let's see. Uh, Tosh Sheridan asks, will juniors be automatically registered for the March 23rd SAT? The answer is yes, I believe, right? That is yes. Yeah. Uh, looks like we've gotten to the, here we go. Um, Looks like we've kind of gotten to the bottom of our, our chat questions is if anyone wants to ask anything else related to any of the issues, now's the time. 
Uh, actually, here's a question uh, from a parent. Is it possible to take pre-calculus over the summer instead of during the school year? It matters what year you are. Uh, the, the only, I do offer pre-calculus over the summer, but that is for students not accelerated so they could take calculus senior year. Um, you cannot take pre-calculus just to get ahead over a summer if it, so you, the only time you could take it is in between uh, junior and senior year. So if you want to take it earlier so you could accelerate further, you can't do that. Okay. Uh, any outstanding questions before we thank Mr. Newman once again? For I do have one that just came into me. I'm sorry, it was a direct. Okay. My son is in ninth grade. Should he be put in community service hours? Where would he find the info on community service requirements? Yeah, I mean, a lot of these, uh, especially community service, because of, you know, COVID types of interactions or, or being exposed to it, we're not so pushing it like we normally do um, and ask you to get out there and whatnot. Um, but we could help you if you want to be engaged in some community service. They're available everywhere. But if you want some ideas about that, you could surely reach out to Miss Massey and she could put you in touch with the right people. But it's not something, I'm not saying we're discouraging it by any means, but um, it's not something like before COVID where it, it was so much more of a thing. Um, but it, it's still a thing. I don't mean to say it that way. Um, so I'll, I'll go back to what I said initially. Uh, if you, you want some opportunities, go talk to Miss Massey and she could help you point you in the right direction to find something. Okay, a question just in from Jason Lynch. My daughter's in the ninth grade and is having a difficult time. Her teacher reports she can review test date to having test due to having 34 students and just refers her to tutoring. My daughter received a test back with no corrections, just the grade. So we do not know what she got wrong. How do we move forward and get support for her? Yeah. I the mean, class I is geometry, he says. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, the, the teacher is, you got to push the teacher a little bit more on some assistance there, but we do offer geometry tutoring um, two days a week, uh, probably not by the teacher um, that your daughter has, and maybe that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, so there is ample tutoring and the, the tutor can go over the work with you and explain to you what you got wrong. So you could take your exam to the tutor and say, hey, can you help me through this to explain uh, what I got wrong? So the tutor can do that. Um, it sounds a little bit, although that is available, it does sound like the, the teacher's passing the buck a little bit uh, to an after-school tutor, which it, it, you could go for that but I'm not really fine with that. So I, I would push the teacher a little bit more for some more assistance, but do go to the after-school tutoring. Uh, the tutoring schedule's up on the website as well. And don't worry, even if they're teaching like a mini lesson, there's no problem with walking up and saying, this is the exam I just had. Can you walk me through how I got, why I got these things wrong? And, and, and not only that, but then if, if you're lacking in a certain type, you know, of equation or, or a certain... Uh, uh, area of mathematics, then they could, uh, beyond the exam, brush you up on that, uh, on that type of mathematics. So you could hit the ground running going forward. Uh, here's a question from one of our new freshman reps, Lorraine Wong. Is pre-calculus required or students can go straight to AP Calc? Pre-calculus is required. And this from our new, uh, school leadership team member, can she know what the temperature is for school. She's heard parents complain about it. What do you mean temperature? You you lost me. Is it too cold, too hot? I don't know. Oh, uh, um, I mean, uh, the, I, I don't know what the complaint is. I mean, in the past, I, I'm imagining that you're referring to the past. I mean, it hasn't been, you know, that cold yet. So I don't know any complaints there would be, um, but Last year, there were a lot of problems with heating that we do not anticipate having this year. But there, so you you might be talking about uh, things that happened last winter um, that we don't anticipate happening. Rain says that she. 
Um, Lorraine, Lorraine, who's a freshman parent, says she's heard some students complain about teachers opening the windows wow. and the students have to wear coats. Yeah. Uh, there are teachers that like a lot of windows open for sort of health, safety, COVID reasons. Um, and are, you know, they might be opening it when the, the heat is not raging because it's not really that cold outside. Um, and it would be amply warm in your room if you didn't have all the windows open. <laughs> and so uh, no matter what, I will tell you, if you open up all the windows in a classroom, no matter how much the heat is pumping, uh, the the windows will win over the heat. Um, so, uh, you know, it sounds like somebody is being a little bit overzealous in form of safety, but uh, I wouldn't want it to be to the point where students are getting sick that they're, they're too cold. So um, I would suggest uh, two things, one, uh, you know, talk to the teacher about it, let them know that, you know, it's really too cold in the room. Um, as an individual student, you can, you know, ask to be moved away from the window. Um, but uh, we have surely sent out information, COVID and other, about, you know, windows can be open that much and be fine for COVID. They don't have to be opening up, you know, like five feet with, you know, eight windows open five feet. That That's, you know, not necessary. There's surely people that are like, you know, more ventilation is better. And I, and I guess that somewhat makes sense. But um, but as it gets colder and colder, that's obviously going to be a problem. Yeah. But yeah, if you, uh, so Lorraine, um, if you want to, if it's a one particular teacher, if you want to reach out to that, uh, the AP of that department, because as I said, it's only getting colder. And if that teacher has the windows open all right now, I mean, if it's a little bit of a problem now, it's going to be a whole lot of a problem in a couple of months. So uh, we could have the assistant principal talk to that teacher. Absolutely. Uh, Rachel also mentions in the chat that for community service, uh, families and parents should be should check out the uh, Instagram uh, accounts that she lists there. So that's another uh, avenue for information. Uh, do we have any last minute questions for Principal Newman, who has been extremely generous with his time and his insights this evening? Are we good? Okay, thank you so much again for joining joining us and uh, fielding all the questions and, um, you know, more to come on budgets and other things, uh, maybe not so much yeah. on the staff holding. But. I will just say as a last statement, I've not done, uh, we haven't started up the snacks with the principal yet this year. Um, and mostly oddly enough, due to uh, lack of snacks, but I did just get an order, a huge order of snacks in my office um, just this week. And so I will be sending out tomorrow for snacks with the principal. Uh, there will be Tuesdays after school and uh, we'll, we'll have 20 students sign up for one Tuesday after another until uh, they're sick of signing up and talking and meeting me or if I run out of snacks. So, um, okay, so uh, that's that. So look, have your kids look out for that. Um, usually they're pretty popular and they go pretty quickly. So, uh, so that's that. Anyway, everybody have a great night. Nice seeing so many of you. Um, and when we have one in person, please, it would be great to see this many people in person as well. And so uh, keep staying involved, keep coming to meetings. Okay. Thanks again. Just a few things before we all split up. Um, and thanks again, Principal Newman. Two dates, which we have not mentioned earlier. Uh, one is the school leadership team meeting, which parents are, uh, it's open to parents. That will be De uh, December 8th, I believe. The next one uh, at 4.45 PM at the school. The second thing I wanna mention is our next uh, Brooklyn Tech Zoom for the December meeting will be on December 22nd. There'll be more information in Tech Talk. We'll collate all of this for you all uh, and be in touch. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. And I guess I now will officially adjourn the meeting if I can have a second. Uh, so, uh, having the, I think the, right. the next PM meeting is the December 15th, right? Oh, it's the fifth. I thought it was the 22nd. It's uh, December fifteenth. That's on my calendar. Oh, okay, I, <laughs> but I had, we can. I can. I'm, I can take a look. Yeah, um, no, I, I'd been told before as we, before the meeting that it was twenty second because I thought it was the third Thursday, but the fifteenth. 
Okay, thanks for correcting me, Mia. Um, that will be at yeah, the December fifteenth. Yeah. Okay. So we've determined that the SAT and the PSAT is March twenty third, and our next PA Zoom will be on December fifteenth at six p.m. Again, the school leadership team meeting is also open to parents, and that is on Thursday, December the eighth. Email us; we're in touch. And thank you all for coming out tonight. I.